Hello Internet, uh, today um, I will be working on this Macintosh 512KE um, and I thought it would be helpful for me to post this uh, to the online community um, just as a bit of a fix-it guide for those of you who have a display flickering um, with a CRT. This computer is on and um, what you'll notice is it doesn't, the, the monitor's not working, but if I tap it on the, on the left side, um, the display comes back on. This is a pretty common issue with uh, the 128, the 512, and the Plus, um, and it's very easy to fix if you can do, basically, if you have any experience with a soldering iron. And so um, I'm going to show you how to do this today. Uh, we'll do a quick take apart of the unit, and um, I will just show you where uh, you need to do some soldering work. Uh, basically, all we're going to be doing today is um, taking old solder off of uh, the um, the cable where, or the the point where the um, uh, anode aperture um, connects with the auxiliary board. So uh, it's it's just four solder joints that need to be refreshed, and so that's that's what we'll be doing. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn this unit off and unplug it, and we'll get started. So opening up any of the Compact Max requires the use of a long uh, T15 screwdriver uh, to get inside this area here where there are two screws um, in this, uh, these two uh, holes. I don't have a T15 today, um, but you can improvise many different tools. One way that you can get in is if you have the right size um, flathead screwdriver. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with this and um, go ahead and open this up. This might take me a minute. You'll notice that this 512KE has been modified to include a uh, SCSI port there um, right over the clock battery. Kind of a cool feature which would allow this computer to boot off of an external hard drive. Uh, I have not done that yet, but it's kind of a rare upgrade to find with these old Macs. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Don't mind the sound of my children playing in the background. They may join us in a minute. Here, in fact, Eli, can you hold this for me? And I'm making a video, so just show everybody what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this computer just by pulling up like that. And it goes off to the side, and we're gonna take a look at the side of this unit. Just like that. Okay, let me see that again. Okay, so you'll see, this is the auxiliary board. And in order to get to the solder joints that we need to fix, we're going to go in here and you're gonna pull, well, actually in this case, we don't have any, um, any screws holding it in. It should just be glued on. So you're just gonna gently pull on this, to see if you can dismount it from these little pads that are holding on and on. You will need to remove this, unfortunately, um, to repair this problem, um, but if you need to, you can uh, find some mild adhesive to get it back on there. So uh, we'll go ahead and peel that off and get under it. Let's see if I can do that. One. three pads here. Okay, there we go. So, the problem joints, um, well, there's actually two places that are uh, frequent um, 
sources of failure for these aux ports. Um, you have these four. They're right under the pad, one, two, three, four. And these are the ones that we're going to pay special attention to. And we're going to need to um, take that pad off, um, pry that off, and then uh, clean it, clean the area. And we're going to re uh, we're going to actually remove this, the old solder from those four joints and replace it with new solder. It's also recommended that you um, pay some attention to these uh, pins here, especially uh, pin one. And to be honest, I can't tell you which one is pin one. It's either this one or that one. Um, but it's recommended that you, uh, at the very least, reflow the solder there. Uh, probably best that we just replace it today. So we're going to do that. We'll just do it with both sides to be safe. I'm pretty sure that's pin one. Um, but anyway, uh, so first off, to remove this awful uh, adhesive pad. Well, first off, we'll see if we can just pull it from the surface as much off as we can oh yeah there we go coming up ever so slightly What happens over time with these solder joints is the the metals, the solder um, breaks down, starts to degrade, and gets cracks in it, and it makes it so that it doesn't have um, a strong connection. That's what causes the flickering. And if it goes on long enough, that degradation can actually cause the unit's display not to come up at all. I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol and, and cloth to remove the, what remains here. Not the end of the world if you can't get all of the adhesive off. Uh, they say it's better if you can. If you need to just burn off some of that with your soldering iron, that's not the end of the world. And I think that's probably what we're going to do. avoid the toxic fumes that we would likely get from this and we're gonna get as much off as we can <laughs> so it's pretty good okay so uh, to make it easier uh, to remove this old solder, we're going to hit it with a little bit of flux. I recommend doing that. It'll make it a lot, this process a lot faster. And we're going to get all four of these joints here. Just a little bit of flux. There. Put the cap back on my flux. We've got some flux on all four pat of those uh, solder joints. And we'll take my soldering iron and um, we're going to need to use uh, a wick to wick off the bad solder. I've got some soldering wick, which we're going to press against the solder joints 
um, while using the soldering iron. I'm going to do my best to hold this in such a way that we can that you can see it. But uh, excuse me if my aim is not really great. I'm going to take my desoldering wick and apply it to one of these. Just kind of wipe it around there to get off the bad solder. Yeah. So you'll see that. Let's get a closer look. You'll see that I have removed the old solder from that joint. I'm going to do it with the other three as well, um, and also with the first and the ninth um, on this. Probably just need to do the first, but we'll do both. Okay, so you can see that I have I've removed the solder from those four joints. Not perfect, but good enough. Um, and you can also see that on this, I removed the solder from one and nine. So we're going to put some new solder um, on those places again. Um, I recommend a little bit of flux. Um, just to make it flow better. Just a little bit. We don't need much. And then I'll take my soldering iron and some solder and we will hit those areas with some new solder. And don't mind me, I'm doing my best to actually film this with a without an extra hand. So and soldering with a phone in your hand is uh, not easy. Doing my best. You want a nice good blob of solder around there. Make sure it's nice and polished. Oh look at that. That's beautiful. Same over here. Just gently apply some. And I really don't recommend just uh, simply reflowing on these. Um, it'll work a whole lot better if you're able to to just um, remove the old solder and put some fresh solder on, because that that old solder at this point is degraded enough that it's just not going to work. Um, as well as it used to. There. Yeah, those four look pretty good now, see? And we'll do the same down here with pins one and nine. need as much solder on these. You want to make sure that you don't have contact with any of the neighboring pins when you do this, so don't put too much on, but that should do it. Um, and uh, so yeah, there you go. We've got fresh solder on all of those joints. So from here you basically just uh, put the unit back together. We're going to put the um, the cover uh, back on the computer um, using the tools I mentioned before. Uh, make sure you clean up um, the space here. If you can clean it with some um, isopropyl alcohol, make sure that's 99% or higher. Um, and uh, let's see if we uh, let's see if we fix this computer. All right, so I've got this reassembled, looking good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and hopefully our display flickering and CRT cutout is all fixed up. Let's see what happens. Pull that switch. Okay, chime and a second. We have a display. It's gonna go ahead and boot up the MacWrite Mac Paint disc. 
And there we are. Beautiful. So um, to test this, one, we're going to try just tapping on the side uh, of the unit because that would have caused the flickering in the past. But really, the best way to make sure that this is <clears throat> that this repair worked um, is to give it a probably. See, that's good. Um, probably give it a, a solid ha half an hour of runtime. Just let it run for about half an hour, um, and uh, come back to make sure that the CRT isn't flickering because sometimes um, once the solder uh, heats up, um, it will cause the flickering that you saw before. Uh, hopefully this repair worked. I'm gonna call it a success um, for now, but I'll come back in a minute just to confirm that. And as you can see, we have a successful repair. We've been playing chess now for a few minutes. River, say hi to the camera. Display repaired, no issues.